guys, what's going on? You're listening to the Infinity Jewels podcast. You're here with Ludwin and Julie, your host. <laughs> um, we're here this week to talk to you uh, about more stuff weekly. We're here weekly. We're here every week. No, we're not. <laughs> serving up nice content once a week, every week. Um, we this, can pretend for this week. It's um, da, 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 and then make the sound effect of the reel of like a movie reel <laughs> Ludwin and Julie go to the movies and yeah let's all go to the movies okay so <laughs> you went to the movies yeah we did a double feature today yeah we might be a little bit late we're not really I mean I guess it came out pretty recently I think they both came out on Friday didn't they okay yeah well whatever we were away I, we would have watched them when it came out this is one of the few movies that I would have watched like I would have gotten like Thursday tickets to watch but um that's fair. But just we weren't there to watch it. And it is the films, Annabelle. Uh, comes Home. Comes Home, is what it's called? Yeah, Annabelle like, Comes Home. I don't necessarily like Spider-Man, like Homecoming or... Oh, man. Or, it's a play on... You think it's like... Summer. It's in the same universe, probably. And the other one is Midsummer. Yes. And, um, yeah. Uh, did you know that Aquaman is in the same universe as Annabelle? What? Why? Uh, so it's the same director from the original Annabelle movie and Aquaman. And in Aquaman, there's like a scene... Of like a watery graveyard, and she's there. So you think it's the same universe? Yes, it's also the same actor. So if Aqu- the the bad guy in Aquaman's the Mister Warren and the- Aquaman meaning Khal Drogo is what you're saying. His brother, the weird looking dude. Okay, that's nice. Well, that's, he's weird looking in that movie. That's he's one of the few normal. superhero movies I've seen. That movie, that movie was nice. I mean, no. That movie was nice. She was nice. <laughs> Amber Heard was nice, nice, but the movie itself, that was a fine movie. I, okay. I it went, was okay. I went into it with a pitchfork, and I left with a happy face. You left with a trident. It was great. <laughs> oh, wow. It was beautiful. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. It was just a great time. That movie was insane. You guys, I'm sure you guys all have seen it already, because it's a great film, critically acclaimed, um, <laughs> but it's just good. Okay. Um, I thought it was enjoyable. But anyway, that's not those aren't the movies we're talking about today. Well, I mean, we're talking about Annabelle. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about Annabelle uh, Comes Home. Um, which... Did you see Anna? I know we went into the movie theater talking about it, but you didn't see the second Annabelle one, right? I've seen every. I've seen all of them. I just my memory on them is maybe a little hazy. But okay. if we if you sat me in front of a screen playing it, I'd be like, I saw this already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, we we went into this movie. Um, it is the third Annabelle movie, but it is part of the, the whole Conjuring universe. Was like the seventh or eighth Conjuring movie? Um, yeah, actually, I think so. Because there's two Conjurings, now three Annabelles. There's only two nuns. Conjurings? Yep. Not, I thought there was another one in that realm, too. Mm, they're making the rag... The, what is his name? The what? The Raggedy Man? The Fairy Man? The no, Crooked Man? the Crooked Man. They're making that. Okay. But maybe there's another one? No, because Insidious movies are, like, in another universe, yeah, just I with, like, that. the same cast. But I could have sworn that it was different. Whatever. Ugly, stupid. Um, okay. Sure. So, uh, I don't know. Do we do a spoiler warning? I feel bad. I want to do, like, a segment of spoilers, but I don't think that's going to work out because we're just going to talk about the movies. Okay. I guess let's try and rummage through spoiler-free content. What would spoiler-free content entail? I don't know. Um, like, what is even a spoiler? Exactly. I feel like everything's a spoiler. So whatever. Think. Fuck it. I mean, uh, not really. I guess we, <laughs> that's the thing. The spoiler, like, is the plot a spoiler? I don't know. Because I feel like there's nothing really spoilery about it. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, there's... It's, it's okay. a movie. Whatever. Um, okay. There's gonna be spoilers. Whatever. <laughs> sure. This is an entire... This is a spoiler cast now, y'all. So, uh... If you guys have any intention to watch Annabelle, I'm pretty sure it would go just exactly as you'd imagine. Yeah, um, it's an Annabelle movie. If I gave you the characters in this film, everything that is going to happen, you would assume. Yeah. Like you might think more people died. I thought more people were going to die. I thought more... Nobody died. Nobody died. That's the spoiler. That's the spoiler right there. Yeah. No one died. You guys got spoiled. All right, now once we lost all those spoiler watchers, everybody died, guys. Everybody died. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That was the prank. No. Um. So, yeah. So, this movie takes place... Uh, I think it takes place Her after house. Annabelle 1... But also after Conjuring one, from what I gathered. Yes, because oh, it takes place after Conjuring two as well. How do we know? Because the uh, Crooked Man. Crooked Man is Conjuring two. Yes. What was Conjuring one about? Oh yeah, Conjuring two. He's in the thing. He has a little. Yeah. Okay, I remember that. Sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this takes place after that. Conjuring two is biscuits. 
little kid has biscuits in his little tent. The train goes into the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sure. He's very cute. I love him. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> um, this movie, when I was, like, seeing the trailer and stuff, I thought it was going to be more about, like, the Warren's house yeah in general because i saw i thought it was gonna be i thought that it might have been like one of those like little like storytelling like anthology kind of things where it like it goes into like the background of each of the artifacts which it did pick a select few to like actually tell us about but yeah i guess yeah they gave some like exposition on it but I but annabelle that... was the main thing of it all yeah I, I didn't expect that i thought she was just gonna be like part of the herd yeah or maybe i thought like she might have been sprinkled into their stories as well but, I mean, it was just kind of like, she would touch stuff, and it would just be like, you kind of saw what they did, but you didn't really know the stories about them. Like, Feely Mealy. Yeah, you would expect that. So, Feely Mealy was a, uh, like, a board game. So, hold on. Let's let's okay, actually, yeah, yeah. like, discuss the movie, right? Of course, right? of course. We're not okay. gonna go into depth on, like, little things. That can be, like, spoilery stuff. Like, uh, like I guess, yeah, see Feely Mealy. Okay, whatever. Okay, so, point is, the movie's about the, the Warren parents... Ed and Lorraine, they leave the house for the okay. weekend. For those of you unfamiliar with the universe, um, uh, Ed and Lorraine, Warren, yeah, they're like a couple of like exorcists. Not really exorcists, they're just kind of like ghosts. Psychics. Whoa. She's a psychic. Okay, she's not a psychic. They call her that in the movie. Okay, sure, she's, a, she's not a psychic. She's like, uh, she's a medium. She can like see ghosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she can like talk to them kind of to an extent. Um, Commune with them. Yeah, she, she's, she sees ghosts. She's a she ghost person. She sees them, she senses them. But she's a person. And, um... They help people. The, what does the dad do? He's just... He's a nice guy. He's just a sweetheart. So, yeah, he's just... They're, the, they're good old Christians he's trying just to the help guy rid the world of evil spirits. That is cool with a freaky ghost wife. They and, are real people. And yeah. they um are most famous for, uh, I think, helping the Amityville family. Yeah, because that, that, they talk about Amityville a lot. Yeah, like, that was their main... They just passed the Amityville Cemetery. That's where they were in the beginning of the movie. It was Amityville? yeah. yeah. Oh wow, I didn't notice that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so they are real people. Uh Lorraine Warren just passed away in real life. Twenty nineteen, yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace. R. I. P. Yeah. Um which kinda question makes me question if they're gonna do like more movies about them. I mean, why not? I mean, I guess at this point she would have been old enough where they're like, Is it cool like if other things to keep making movies? I think so. Yeah, they probably were fine. I mean they're making Crooked Man and stuff and they made yeah. this one, so. so whatever. Um, but yeah, so they have a daughter who throughout the movie it's revealed that the daughter has the same gift as her mother yeah that that was not shown i don't think in the other annabelle or flash conjuring movies that they have the kid that the kid has power yeah yeah so the parents go away i think to do like more like exorcism stuff and Uh, then yeah they're just gone i don't know if they say because they were only going off for a night maybe oh yeah because they were in the middle of an investigation so I wonder if their investigation while this movie's going on is one of the other movies that we've seen. Probably. Well, I thought that they should go into it. Like, they had just uncovered, was the ferryman a new one that they did? No, they were only Mm-mm. gone for a night. They wouldn't have done that. I don't remember, but I feel like they probably mentioned it, but I don't know because I'm not watching it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so, God, what happened? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. yeah, they were gone for a night. Uh, they had a babysitter. They had a babysitter, hot babysitter um who's she was a hot girl but also a wholesome friend. girl she was a wholesome girl yeah she was she That's, was really nice she was your classic uh you know little little nice little you know girl little wholesome girl yeah yeah so and then she had a even hotter friend as ludwin said oh there we go who this is another spoiler whose father passed away that year so of course she took it upon herself to try to commune with her father in the warren's house after finding out what the Warren's occupation was. I mean, I like, do we need to? I guess, so this is the thing. We're already way too deep into it, but like for the next one, maybe for the next movie you go into, do we need to like delve this deep into No, but I'm going to, I'm telling them why. Okay. She opened the door that was Annabelle's lock. Yeah. And let all yeah. the evil things yeah, out. She was because sleeping around. She, she was doing that. She wasn't even really supposed to be there. Cause I guess the little girl's having a birthday party. Um, no, she wasn't. <laughs> she was having a birthday. Oh, the next day was birthday party, but little she like was over because the little girl was like they're having cake. They're making cake. Oh yeah, I guess. Okay. Um, they were. Uh, she was just there for her little birthday thing, whatever. Because her birthday was that day, I thought, and then it was just the next day. They're was celebrating her party. early. Yeah. Birthday was later. No way. Yeah. No way. Too gay. Yeah. 
Okay, whatever. Oh well, yeah, hot friend um is like, oh, I gotta see what's down there. I gotta I gotta find the the clues. I gotta see what's all this scary stuff. So she just goes into the room that's like forbidden and just starts requesting to speak to spirits. And then at first she doesn't really get any responses, but then as the story goes, she got the responses. She, got she a just bunch wasn't. Of crazy yeah. yeah. So the movie, as all of the Conjuring movies are, are I feel like are mostly jump scares. Um, I hit my face a lot. I mean, I don't know about jump scare. I guess so. I guess it was jump scares. I don't know. I honestly didn't feel that scary. Yeah, it was jump scares for sure. Well, I'm thinking about the moments. Let's talk about our surrounding as well. What about it? We oh, saw I guess, yeah, we watched the film while there was like a school bus worth of <laughs> children sitting in the back of the thing. So they were throwing popcorn up in the projector. They were uh, being really loud, loud, and yeah, just making a bunch of comments, which you know, I guess maybe immersed me less, right? Yeah, but, I th- I thought it was for a fun movie experience, but I understand how that would be. Um, I guess yeah. like a mood kill. You know, makes you wouldn't me, be as scared because everybody's like laughing and you're stuff. Little kids laughing about dumb stuff, and like when one thing switches to another, it's like they're not giving the quiet time that you need to understand what's happening there. I don't know, whatever. That wasn't that big of an issue, though. I still watched it. I still enjoyed it, I guess. Because, I mean, it was a fine movie. I don't know if there was really a story being told. It didn't really progress the plot of the Conjuring slash Annabelle cinematic universe. It just kind of... was a night in hell. It was just like a little, like, a little boop. It was a boop in the Annabelle universe. Because, like, unless we find out something in a later movie... That was released there? Nothing happened here to make it later. Yeah. But Although I have a theory that something was released, like you said, but we'll see. What What do you think was released? Remember, she took the crucifix. oh the cross from that thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe yeah, that could be it. Maybe anyway. So the cool aspect of this movie was that not only Annabelle got released, but a lot of the creatures did. Like you said, of, yeah, a bunch of the other little spirits um, that were really some of them I thought were worse than Annabelle because like I think Annabelle's spooky, but I listen to podcasts about like the real story and stuff and knowing that the doll itself isn't possessed like it's not like a chucky situation yeah it's just something's holding on to her yeah i mean, it, that, I find her less scary i mean that's what the movie's about that she's not possessed in the movie right yeah, yeah. yeah okay so i don't know yeah uh like i mean she's still scary as long as the dolls are around the things holding on to her it's not like, yeah, yeah i know yeah. i know but like there's still that big demon thing like it's still like super strong god they showed him a lot in this movie. Yeah, he was just around and fucking shit up, which was kind of sweet. Um, and yeah, I guess it was kind of sick that I feel like if you're going to have a babysitter, you should probably inform them on like, maybe they just don't want to pique your curiosity. I don't know. But it's like she didn't even know what Annabelle looked like. So there was a point in the movie where she sees the the babysitter sees Annabelle like twice, several times Annabelle's disgust and she just doesn't like realize that that's the doll. she doesn't know what's happening like she doesn't realize that annabelle is like this entity of evil she kind of just thinks like annabelle is like a normal doll yeah that looks kind of ugly yeah so weird um that was cool um hot friend comes through bob love interest for blonde main girl also nice that guy's super nice if you want to if he dies any time between now and annabelle 3 2 i want to <laughs> be casted as that <laughs> um there were also the ferryman which was a cool guy. Oh, yeah. Ferryman. Yeah, the other things that... Oops. I'll stop playing with that. <laughs> the other <laughs> things that um uh come about to play at night is... uh Yeah, Ferryman's one of them. He's uh literally like the Greek mythology Ferryman. I, you have to... What? I don't know what you mean by that. I think like people just know that shit. I'm, I was going to say... Oh, okay. okay <laughs> before yeah. you cut me off. I was going to say he's literally just, you know, everybody fucking knows this guy, the... The ferryman's the, the person who takes your soul to like the underworld after death, but you have to give him money in order for him to take your soul there. You have to pay the toll to get your soul. Yeah. Or else to take your soul. Something like that. It's toll and toll. A lot. Um, so, so yeah. he was cool because he had just like coins for eyes at one point. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of people that just have coins on their eyes. So if you're into that, that's, there's a lot of that there. Yeah. It's also an old wives' tale. So it's not just Greek mythology. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, there was also, like, this samurai, which I wanted more info on. Yeah, I don't really get any information on the samurai, but... It's just, like, a suit of armor. Yeah, the samurai suit of armor, she looks at it, and it makes a bunch of noise. Japanese noises. Yeah, it's dope. It seems like 
it was like enticing her in like if she put on the armor like some crazy shit would happen yeah, she like w- she would be possessed or whatever oh, i don't know maybe it was just having her look at it because she was just looking at it and it was just like it like you saw that the other sound was like clouded out so i'm not exactly sure what it was and it, it sounded like bloodshed like it was like the past of the suit yeah probably you know, and then like, in another scene we actually see eyeballs in the oh yeah we saw a face there's not just eyeballs there's like a whole face in it but i don't remember what the face looked like it was just a normal face except there's probably like blood yeah. yeah um there was also a bride yeah that there's... one fucked me up a that lot. was the most recent one i thought i thought that's what they had just finished what unless i'm wrong i thought the bride was like one of the more recent ones that they put inside of the thing I don't remember. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't really I'm know trying to remember about. what was the most recent case they were working on in that film. I don't know if they discussed it. I thought they did. Okay, whatever. Wasn't it Annabelle and then they were going home? No way, because was, that was a year after Oh, you're Annabelle. right, you're right, you're right. Okay. So, yeah. Point is, the bride was fucking terrifying. And it was just like your stereotypical like haunted mansion killer bride. But she did some fucked up shit. <laughs> I mean, I like the main thing. It's like, what, like, yeah, something that also got me in the other movies that we saw, like, um, Hereditary, or like, it wasn't just the fact that like she was an ugly looking, scary bride. Because I used to get really scared of like those, like, just like womanly, like silhouettes killing me, which is scary. Like, just like yeah, yeah. long drapey dresses and stuff were like, spooky. Kid and gross. But just like the way that she like the stamping, like she like that... was weirdly like crooked in the first scene, like. You know, like the snap motions. Yeah. And well, then she stomped. Yeah, and then she's like, yeah, just that. I think it's like the auditory thing mixed with what you're visually seeing actually scares you, which I guess happens in every... That's what jump scares are, right? Like a big, long, like auditory, like... Silence. Like, th- not even a silence. Sometimes it'll be like a raising... What's that called? It's not a crescendo. Oh, like the... It's a, uh, ascending? Yeah. Ascen- ascendo? I don't Whatever. know what the fuck that shit's called, dude. I don't... Like, I wasn't in the <laughs> band. I'm not a virgin, dude. Um... <laughs> Um, so, yeah, and uh, I heard about that elsewhere, like, that that idea, like, picture yourself in just, like, a, a building, and, like, you just hear, like, s- like hard stomping stomping is just up scary. to you, right behind you, and then you turn around and there's nothing there, or, like, whatever, like, I, I don't heard, know. If I heard literally anything, if I heard, like, small steps, if I heard, like, the sound of a, of anything, like a bug, if I felt a bug fly by my ear and I was around there wasn't a bug, I'd be like, why the fuck did I feel that shit? Okay, yeah, but I don't know. Stomping has another level for me because that, that's just scary. I know, yeah, it's like rough. going with intent. But like, why, why are they stomping? Anyway, yeah, she like every single time she came up, she specifically stomped. Like nothing else did, just her. And um, I think she like possessed people to be violent. Yeah, well, she I don't know she the well she was probably inside of the dress shit or something. Oh yeah, because I guess she was in the dress and she ran up to the girl and then threw up in her mouth, and then she was wearing the dress. <laughs> so, yeah. This probably makes no sense to the listeners. So but, explain yourself. I mean, they watched it. Like I'm assuming that if you're listening this far, you have to have watched it and understand. It's like the well, girl they're watching it through us. Maybe no wait, that's disgusting. Why'd you do that? Just watch it. She runs up to her. Uh, the bride runs up to the The bride up runs to the up hot to hot girl. girl. Hot girl is brown hair girl. She's the only girl in the movie with brown hair. She runs up to hot brown hair girl, and then she throws up in her mouth after she, like, pins her to the ground. She stabs her first. Okay, she stabs her, but then she looks down. She's not really stabbed. Which I guess is, like, why didn't she actually just stab her? I don't Maybe, get it. I think she was, like, a ghost, Maybe you she know? doesn't have so, the ability to stab her. Okay, I guess. And I think she felt the pain of a stab, but then she was like, what the hell? Maybe she was real. just in her brain, yeah. Yeah. Brain ghosts. Those are weird. Those are weird. And then she uh, vomited blood like onto the girl's face and into mouth. her mouth yeah and then um and the then, next time we see the girl she was possessed by the bride yeah or she was wearing the the bride clothes yeah yeah which i thought was cool but also spooky but yeah. the girl made it out alive perfectly yeah, fine so weird. they all made it out alive the girl this, this movie like weirdly reminded me of like goosebumps <laughs> i'm not familiar with i didn't really watch them uh but um I don't know, yeah. Why did it remind you of Goosebumps? It reminded me of, like, a scarier Goosebumps. Both in, like, the Goosebumps, but also that Goosebumps movie with Jack Black that came out recently. I haven't seen that. Okay, so that movie was about all the books coming to life. Okay. And Jack Black plays, like, R.L. Stein, which is the author of all of them. Oh, that's sweet. I know who that is. Okay, just, I don't know. Oh, wow, thanks for informing me. You're welcome. And so, this movie reminded me of that, because, like, everything was coming back. Stop chewing your gum, please. I can hear it here. <laughs> 
and he spit it out. Um, so yeah, like there was a character that was literally like he was possessed by hellhounds or something like that, but he literally looked like a werewolf, and so that made it a little bit more campy. Like I felt like there was a lot of things in this movie that like wouldn't be a normal Conjuring universe. I thought that the werewolf guy was the hellhound. He was possessed by hellhounds. How you know? They said it. Don't buy it. Hellhounds are spooky as hell, though. Do you know what hellhounds are, Ludwin? They're hellhounds, dude. Do you know, like, what they're supposed to be like? They're fucking scary dogs. They're like black dogs with no face. And then, like, when you see them, that means you're gonna die. Wow. (laughs) And usually, like, they take your soul. (laughs) Okay, cool. To the underworld. To hell. Yeah. I assumed. I don't know. The idea of, like, think, seeing they were nice one dogs. in, like, the dark, were... like, a picture you're walking home, and there's just, like, a dog, and, like, you're like, oh, a doggy, and then it turns around, and it has no face, and you're like, what? And then you question petting it or not, because it has no face, because you're just like, but it's still a doggy. But then it takes your soul and you die. I guess. I don't know. Nothing about that seems more or less scary than anything else. That's fine. That doesn't seem like more scary than if a person turned around and had no face. If a plant turned around and didn't have flowers, that's scary. If a, if a monkey with no face, very scary. Literally anything without a face that's supposed to have a face is scary. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know. Hellhounds in general, I don't but know. But it's supposed to be like a big black dog. Hey, whatever, it's a dog. I feel like I just kick a dog. It's not smart. Dogs aren't smart. Stop it. No, I mean, don't say you're going to kick a dog on my podcast. I'm not going to kick a dog, but I would kick a dog if it came and tried to bite me. Especially if it didn't have a face. I would kick that dog very fast. So, I don't know. I think if people out there have shoes on, just kick the dog. Don't be that scared. Okay. Um, um so yeah, how would you how would you rate this movie, Ludwig? Um, the movie oh I think we forgot to talk about like the most dang thing that I think in the movie was that I guess it was like untapped potential that I feel like could come up in something else. Or just the concept of it. Was that there was a TV that oh, showed yeah. um the girl the hot girl to be uh clear to clarify. There was a TV that showed her and she was there in front of it, but it was playing like a couple seconds earlier than what real life is. So she was able to see what she was about to do in the future. Um, so like, yeah, I don't know. She So something would happen that would freak her out in the TV and then she's watching herself in that TV and then she would act, she would react the exact same way. So it kind of gave her a little like peek into like, oh, wow, this is about to happen. I shouldn't do that. But that didn't really happen. She kind of just played directly into it. Um, but Which I just, makes me question, actually, because remember... Um, I don't know the story behind that TV. Remember she picks up the phone call? The, yeah. I mean, in the thing, in the blood? Yeah. What was that? Was that the phone? Or was that the blood that happened with the bride lady anyway later? Nah, that was the phone, I think. The girl, like, the girl told her not to answer it for a reason. I'm pretty sure something happens to that phone. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so there was a point where... It, it shows in the TV that she answers the phone and then, like, a bunch of blood comes at her and she starts screaming. It looked like Carrie. But, uh, the, what's her name? Judy? I don't know what her name is. Judy, Judy. yeah, it was Judy. Uh, the ma- daughter. Yeah, she prevents a uh, hot girl from answering the phone. So, yeah. Yeah, um, th- I think that TV could have been, like, a lot cooler because it's, like you said, like, she could have seen something and then, like, run the other way or, like, reacted differently. Or just what it is is just dope. I just think it's dope. Yeah, it reminded me of, like, um, like an entire SCP. movie of that. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Because, like, you could do so much stuff with that. And it's so, like, it's, like, not that broken because it's only, like, two seconds earlier or whatever. Yeah. But then it's, like, what happens if you do break the continuation of it? Like, now that it has shown something that didn't actually happen in real life, like, is that girl screaming still on the screen? How did she go away from the screen? Does it black out? I don't know. I think it blacked out. I don't know. Who knows? But show. also, like, why doesn't it show what really happens? I don't know. There's a lot of questions here. What do you mean, why doesn't it show what really happens? Because you can alter it. You can alter what's going to happen because you watch it. But she didn't watch it. I know, but if you did watch it, like... That's what I mean. So, like, if she did watch it, you can alter it. But why didn't... Why... Yeah. Is, that... is it, like, its own cognitive thing? And, like, so it didn't know that Judy was going to run in at that moment? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I'm not sure. That's weird. So I guess there is some kind of trolley stuff who knows what happened with that very cool tv but you know what maybe we could look it up remember they're real people sure. they have a real room okay but we can't assume that all this stuff is real no we can't assume but feely mealy is real oh <laughs> let's talk about feely mealy <laughs> if you want feely mealy is mainly funny just because of the name the name's damn funny it's feely funny mealy. say it feely. hold on give them a second feely mealy go 
was kind of kind of raunchy. You liked it, right? Okay. So yeah, it's literally you... just a board game, terrifying ass board game though. You pretty much pick a card. The card says like, "Oh, find this inside the box," and you put your hand... yeah. It's a box with four holes on either side for all the players. And you put your hand inside the box. And you're supposed to pick up that object that's on the card. By feeling it. Yeah, by like feeling around. So, you know, you're feely mealying it. In a wholesome way, like, this wouldn't be scary, but because it's a horror movie, like, you instantly think, like, horrible things are going to happen. Yeah, but I always thought, like, maybe, like, their hands would get cut off, fingernails. I thought they did grab it. They would grab, like, a human or something inside, but that didn't happen. But I guess it did show that... A bunch of like three, four hands, four hands came uh, out. Of each ended hole. up coming out of each hole and tried to grab people. And so maybe that would have happened, but for some reason it didn't. I guess I would have just added more time to the movie that it really didn't need to be there. That's the thing. I don't know. It just it seemed like just like I was watching it for the entertainment of seeing what it was. Like it's, oh yeah, it, definitely. Like it's not a very good story movie. It's not a. There is like very little story. There's not a plot. It's just a movie. The plot was so that's the thing too. Like all of these things were, like, beaconed by Annabelle. So the moment that they put Annabelle back, the everything else stopped, which is, like, fake, you know? It's weird. Like, yeah, why? Everything should have been, like, like had like, to put back. Like, yeah, how come Annabelle saved that from happening? I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, but it was cool. Like, I think movies like that, you just really, like, any of those horror movies, really, you can't put thought into them. You can't try and make them make sense. You just kind of got to watch it and enjoy it. Like Yeah, cause watch you, it for what it is and uh, don't. And then once you start it. thinking into it, it gets stupid. Yeah. Um, the real spoiler is the ending, which isn't really that much of a spoiler, but the last, like, scene of the movie is the Crooked Man's little, like, jewelry box thing or whatever. The mirror from it is looking at Annabelle. So I don't know if that's going to mean something like Annabelle's evil isn't contained because she's in the mirror, or if that was just, like, a hint at the next movie to come being the Crooked Man, or if, like, they're going to be together. I don't know. But don't Crooked know. Man's box thing was open so yeah. that could be another that could be the thing that you said that something's not um something's like yeah not something's open correctly who knows yeah and i've been really interested in the crooked man movie just because he was very creepy and conjuring yeah crooked sounds weird yeah um but the bent neck lady she weird oh uh, bent neck lady like even after we found out like what she was still the like concept of her and like imagery of her freaks me out you guys need to be way too smart okay i understand who she is i'm not afraid of bent necks anymore people just have bent necks and okay with that mm-hmm. i get it your neck's bent i'm sorry i feel for you feel do you want to give this movie a, a rating Ludwig? a rating of this movie okay um i like to rate movies not in numbers but in comparison to other movies right because how else are you going to compare how do you know what a 10 out of 10 movie is right yeah you don't. so you just you just kind of compare it to the best movie you've ever seen which all of us know is Ratatouille. So <laughs> this movie we put on a scale of Ratatouille at the top. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there because this is going to be like a point five. Um, <laughs> why don't you compare it to the rest of the Conjuring universe exclusively? Not even Insidious, just like... Okay, I think it shouldn't even be rated. I feel like it shouldn't be in that because those it truthfully doesn't have any plot to it. There's no story being told. It's just like a little... It's like a little, it's like a little bonus clip. It's cool. I enjoyed it. It felt like an OVA. It's fun, for, yeah. It just, like, it was just kind of like, for our enjoyment, it was a filler episode. <laughs> yeah, it was a filler episode, but it was still sweet. I still loved it. Exactly. Filler episodes sometimes the, are really fun. Filler episodes are generally my favorite episodes. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, I guess, I don't know, dude. Uh, um. I feel like, entertainment-wise, I liked it more than the original Annabelle. Just because the original Annabelle, like, I found scary at points, but not as enjoyable. The second Annabelle, I've seen it like two or three times. I think I saw it actually with you. Yeah. We watched it together. We started watching again, yeah. I think this one has hotter girls. It has so. hotter girls and it's a little bit more entertaining just because like it's not just the spooks. There's also like humor with uh with the hot girls and Bob. And Bob, yeah. And like everybody lives, so it's not like But I mean you don't know where everybody lives. You like, mean at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, you didn't know oh, yeah, going yeah. Into, there's still stuff at stake. And like I said, it reminds me of Goosebumps, so it's like it's scary, but fun. Fun scary, which I love. Yeah. Um, I also kind of liked it better than The Nun, because I didn't think The Nun was... But The Nun also had hot girls. Oh my god, Taisa Farmiga is... Yeah, The Nun also had hot girls. So it's, it's rough. It's rough trying to balance that out. Yeah. Okay. It was um, entertaining. I don't know what I'd rate Well, it. look, we spent exactly half an hour on this movie, so now we're gonna spend... We'll see. 
Okay, so the next movie we saw. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the rating of it, who knows, you just watch it. It's good. Yeah. I'll, I'll say... give it like out of. Okay, how many um, Conjuring movies did we say there are? We said there's like six. Six? Seven. Seven. Okay, out of seven, I'll give it a three because it's my. It's in third. Yeah. You give it a three? Like, is one the lowest or highest? Lowest. Oh, you think it's the third worst? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right, sure. It was it was alright. It was cool. Um I yeah. Out of like pure entertainment. Not like I said talking a, as a movie buff, not talking as like Yeah, when I said to watch it because it's good, that was a prank. I don't think it's actually good. I think it's a fine movie. It's, I'd watch it's, it. Again. Uh, it's fun. Yeah, there you go. So whatever, just watch it, dude. Okay. Um, bam. Next movie we saw back to back. We We literally went back to we back. We took Regal's money. We Stop. Brought our unopened Arizona and her pockets stuffed full of snacks. In my new Apari jacket, which will be my snack jacket. Okay. Uh, we Shout went, out Apari. We went there into a um, um, uh, fucking Midsummer, Which is created by the creators of Hereditary. Yes, I mean, it's directed by, what's his name? Who knows? Ari. Name. Ari something. Ari something. Ari, Ari. It was an A24 in Pictures, which I have um, applied for. So if you're listening, A24. Hire me, please. Okay, sure. Yeah, A24 guys, hire her right now because she saw your movie. <laughs> hire me too, shit. No, 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 not him. Just me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we watched Midsummer. Uh, Midsommar. Go- yeah, going into it, I was like, well, I don't know. Um, I saw things about it. I didn't really know what it was about. I just heard that it wasn't as good as Hereditary. I, You know, right before we went into the movie, Isaac texted us that... He didn't oh, like it as much as Hereditary. I didn't read that, but I've also heard from other people that it's not. It doesn't live up to what Hereditary was. And Hereditary, I thought was one of the best movies, like one of the best, not even just horror movies, just one of the best like films. I agree. In that kind, like I don't know, it was just good. Like everything, it just made you really unsettled. So that's the thing. That's what I liked about Hereditary, which I guess this one kind of went into. Hereditary played more with the thought and the aspect of like spiritual things, and, and like, a little bit. I feel like Hereditary was a little bit more horror, whereas this one was a little bit more like suspense it was suspense but i would also call this horror i think it has the horror themes the only thing that it doesn't have is like a supernatural thing which is what hereditary had hereditary had like the spiritual had the occult Mm -hmm. but this one was still like very much occult well yeah hold on though i want to talk about my like going and expectations okay so i knew nothing about this movie i had seen like snips of a trailer like not even a full thing and it was just like close up of people's faces i didn't know who was gonna be in this movie I didn't know the plot. I just knew it was very bright and colorful. And that Ludwin told me it was the same people who made Hereditary. So, yeah. Okay, now. You, you, know. you truthfully didn't even. Didn't I said that I didn't know anything about the movie. So you had no I had zero expectations okay, or okay. zero idea, like, what was going to happen. Other than the fact that it was supposed to be spooky. And I had the feeling it was going to be a cult movie just because of the. The setting of it. Like the setting, just, yeah. the brightness of it. What do you yeah. mean? Because, like, Hereditary, like, even, like, if you look at the freaking poster, like, it's a dark movie. They use dark tones that, for everything. Hereditary is also a cult thing. Why would the brightness mean this one's also a cult thing? Because, I don't know, it's playing a trick on you. Oh, I just, yeah. I just had a yeah, feeling. Yeah, just had, Julie has a lot of feelings. Julie just calls a lot of I'm shit. Psychic. Julie's psychic when it comes to movies, guys. <laughs> they show a picture of a guy dying, Julie's like, he's gonna die. And then once he <laughs> dies, she goes, I fucking knew. I called it, guys. Holy shit, dude. And then she fucking raises her hand in the middle of the fucking theater. She's like, guys, I knew it. Like, you, Julie, we love you. And then, it's great. It's awesome. I just want people to clap for me. If you ever meet me, clap for me. Clap for her because she called it, dude. <laughs> no. So... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, uh, Midsummer, not Hereditary. Hereditary, good. Midsummer, also good. Um, but different. Uh, so, yeah, that's the thing. I feel like people might start kind of losing into things. I know people that aren't really, they don't get afraid of, um, like, ghosts. Like, yeah, supernatural stuff, like spirits or whatever. Yeah, they're, everybody they're gets afraid of, like, real. different things. Like, yeah. Um, whereas this one, that's the thing. It's also. Because even Hereditary, the thing that scared me wasn't, like, the supernatural beings. For me, it was the visual. Yeah, yeah, And the humans. That's pretty much it. Mainly, it was the visual aspect. Everything was, like, so visceral. Everything was, like, you see, like, the way that they, like, their motions. And Hereditary, when the person was sawing their own neck off Hell yeah. from hanging, that was crazy. So that's kind of, um, I guess this kind of goes into, like, the next thing I wanted to talk about later. But I could talk about it now because it fits in really well. Like. Why are we talk about it right now? Because it's visual. 
to it. We're not even talking about it. Fine. Okay. Just, we'll talk fine, about it after. Talk, no, it's fine. We'll, talk we'll about just it. I just keep a like note, guys. Railing, but go ahead. Say it. Talk about it. No. It's Too okay. late. Too late. No, it's fine. You're making it weird by not talking about it. Talk. Okay. I've been obsessed with Junji Ito, which we've talked about on this podcast before, but, like, I've only known, like, his main work and haven't even read them at that point, and Ludwin had only read uh, Amigara Fault. Yeah, that's the only one that I watched, that I read. And so I read that one, became obsessed, and I've been, like, on a binge of all his stuff. So I just feel like his work what is, like, so cool and, like, spooky about it isn't, like, the plot, because their plot's usually really lacking. It's the, like, visual disturbing aspect of it all. Yeah. And I think that's why Hereditary and Midsummer were, like, cool, because it was, it's, like, the opposite of what Annabelle was. There's no jump scares. It's just all visually, like, fucks you up. Yeah, but I feel like, I feel like, I mean, like, Annabelle, like, visuals, that's the thing, yeah. Things don't sneak up on you, like right. They're there. They're in the background. Like that's why. And not even that. It's not even that it's there in the background. Like they for they they hyper foreshadow everything. Like you in know what? what are you talking about in uh in Annabelle? No, no, no. In, in Midsummer. Oh, like you know everything that's gonna happen like ten or fifteen minutes prior to actually happening. Like you know they tell you they give you leaks of information. Like this is like what they're gonna do. Like we knew there was gonna we were about to watch a sacrifice maybe fifteen minutes before them actually sacrificing a person. Mm-hmm. We knew that they were gonna um have like we knew that they, that guy was gonna go have sex with that person like in yeah. half an hour before that happened. And that was even weird. We knew before he ate that pie and we saw that cup, like he's eating pubic hair, he's drinking your her blood. Like this isn't like things that like were like people who haven't they, seen they, it are like what they are you didn't like about? jump at us, but like it's stuff that we knew like yeah, they make you well aware of what's happening, and you're just watching it, and it's just like it's such a like uncomfortable thing to watch, and it's such like a, it's not like yeah, it just puts you out of a zone of comfort. Whereas because like, you know something that the the cast doesn't, so you're almost like an omnipresent. That and also like just what it is is like you're watching a guy jumping down. That's not jump scaring you. The guy's jumping down. You know he's gonna smack. You know his face is gonna be pushed in. Like it's just like. It's... So, okay, Midsummer is about this dude who, like, gets his friends from America to go back to his homeland in Sweden, and his homeland is, like, pretty much a small cult, but he, his friends don't know that. Well, they know it's a small commune. Yeah. They don't, The only thing that they didn't really know going into it was that they had sacrificial practices. Right. Everything else about it, they kind of expected. They knew that it was, it was, like... it was a very small community. They knew that, like... It was yeah. the midsummer like ritual. It was like a festival. Yeah, because that's a thing that other cultures have. Um, so he went there. They just didn't know what practices they had. And it kind of leaves you guessing for a little bit too. Like obviously, you know that it's a horror movie, so you know that something's gonna like be fucked up. But like, if we hadn't known it was a horror movie, for example, like we would have gone into that, and even when like the fucked up shit started happening, like being in their shoes. Yeah. Like it is could have just been a cultural thing. Yeah, I guess so. Which I guess is what they were experiencing. I almost wish I saw it in that sense. Um, but yeah, the guy he takes them there, and then they start witnessing all of their like weird practices. Um, and then people start dying, but like, or like people start going missing. They don't know that people are dying. Yeah. Um, but they technically never really know. Even watching it, it feels like, like yeah, that part's not really that scary. It just seems like a different culture because like there's nothing about them. Nothing that the people are doing is like with bad intent. They're not trying to like like murder sacrifice them. people to murder them. They're going In fact, some of the Americans even like do things that like would warrant that. Yeah, but I guess it is also bad cuz they are bringing in for their goal is to bring four outsiders to murder them. Like part of the goal of that guy was to bring four like they at the end there's nine sacrifices of the entire midsummer. Four of them are outsiders, four of them are people of their own of the place of the tribe. And then one person is elected by the the girl, the the May Queen, which is like I guess she's like the person who celebrated during this Midsummer Festival, right? Um, which ends up being the main character, the girl. Uh, and so that's the kind of thing too. Like they didn't kill her, so like maybe they wouldn't have killed the guy if she didn't choose him, for example. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Oh yeah, I mean they wouldn't have killed him, but then he was still paralyzed. Like, right, like the two, the three people who died, uh, four, um, like um, outsiders who died, yeah. were all died because of like a reason. 
Yeah, because they tried to leave, or like they were just like disrespected their practices to an extent. Yeah, one of them was a big extent, but <laughs> one of them's a gangster. Same one. <laughs> huh? Same one I'm talking about. Oh no, <laughs> I think that wasn't as disrespectful as the guy taking pictures of his stuff. He just peed. People got peed. It's a tree. On their ancestors' he ashes. Didn't, he didn't know that. He didn't know what he was doing was wrong. The guy literally went there with the intent of taking a flash photography of this book he was, he was forbidden to do. The other guy just took a pee. He didn't know what was happening. He's just stupid. He's just stupid and awesome. Okay. Um, Will Poulter is the guy I'm talking there about. There we go. You guys, you guys might know him from Bandersnatch. He's the main game developer. Not the main one. I like the main character. But like the titty one the guy tries to aspire to be. And he sees him. He's like, God, you're so cool. And then he's the guy that ends up jumping off and killing Is this himself. who you were saying uh, yesterday? Because you mentioned guy from Bandersnatch, and I th- I just assumed you meant the main guy. Oh no, that guy's whack. So you meant this guy? Yeah, that guy's that's tits. funny. Okay. Yeah. And is. then the other guy who took the pictures was um Chitty from Chitty Adagonie from uh, the Good Place. The Good Place, which is a good show. Yeah. It has one season left. Anyway. Haven't seen it. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That movie. Uh. It's just good. Um. <laughs> I'm just saying it's just good. I'll give reasons why I believe it's good. Um. I believe it was good because I got into it, and, um, well, let's talk about things why we don't think it's good first. I have things that I don't think it was good. Go. Just one, but you're probably gonna debunk me quick. Say it. Um, I just felt, and this wasn't, like, a plot thing, I just felt like, uh, Chitty and Mark died a little too quickly. Mark being Will? Will, that's the actor's Will Poulter, yeah. Yeah, Will. I feel like... When they died made sense, but, like, based on my viewing of Hereditary, I expected both of their deaths to be, like, a tiny bit more visual. Like, if we would have seen what happened to Will's character, I think it would have been, like, horrifying. And it would have been, like, good to also show us, like, I mean, what, yes, what fucked up things are happening. What happened to him? Well, that girl led him to go have sex. Yeah. And then and next we see some other guys wearing his entire skin. Oh, I thought that it was him wearing the face, but I guess that does make sense, yeah. It was some other guy wearing his face, which is why. But it wasn't just his face, I think. I think it was, because didn't you say, like, his, I don't, his wiener was cut off or something like that? Yeah, there was a guy that had a wiener cut off. He, his wiener was bleeding or cut off. And that was Mark's face. Yeah. Well, was it? I don't so even know. So what if he cut face. off his entire body, like what they did to the bear? Yeah, and then just had somebody else wearing it? I guess so. I'm not sure. That, that I would have to watch it again or pause it, because I didn't really get the full thing, because it was a very quick scene. That's what I meant. So, like, it was just, like, a very fast scene when I feel like that scene should have been, like, a little bit more pivotal, because that was when, like, the true, like, horror aspect of the movie started. I mean, I guess, because they killed Chidi, but I think, like... That's when the audience knew, like, for that they were just killing people, that, yeah. yeah. Um, which I guess is scary, but, like... I think we don't need to know what happens. I feel like we saw it. It would have been cool, but I don't think it would have added more to the movie. I don't think it, like, I think it would have just been an extra three minutes in a two and a half hour long movie. I, yeah, but I think it would have been, it would have been nice. I felt like I was missing that. Um, But other than that, like, I don't really have any complaints. Like, Which I guess- there are scenes that make me, like, really uncomfortable, but that was the point. Yeah. And characters that make me super mad, but that was the point. What so, characters made you mad? The guy. You're just, you're just bad. You're just bad at watching movies. That guy's supposed to make you happy. That guy's awesome. No, not your guy. That guy was fine. He was oh, funny. Oh, Christian. I'm talking about guy. Christian. Oh, yeah, the guy. girl's boyfriend. That's the thing. It's the entire thing of it uh, is like, like the, the horror aspect of it, I guess, is that this girl, like, that's the thing. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. That it's a horror movie that deals with completely non-spiritual things. Like, oh, yeah. It's just like a completely non, like, very human, real life things uh she's her parents just died in an accident not an accident uh her i guess yeah her sister killed them um, and then herself yeah or, or i guess suicide. it was like simultaneously whatever um but yeah, well, she, yeah okay. so she did that and then she's she has a boyfriend that like it's a very bad relationship um the like boyfriend seems like he wants to break up with her at the beginning of the movie but the then boyfriend continuously wants to break up with her and then she is blaming herself for things that aren't really she shouldn't be blamed for um and the boyfriend just kind of feeds into that like he's like okay yeah no you're fine like he kind of like yeah is like kind of, he, like he doesn't say very... he doesn't he never says that it's her fault but it, it he kind of he doesn't do anything to make her feel alleviated of that she always just kind of feels bad and he's just like okay sure yeah. i feel like it was a very modern take on like 
modern romance. Because <laughs> she, like, had, like, stuff going on. And had, like, you could tell, like, you know, she took those pills. Like, she either had, like, depression, anxiety. Like, she had something. Yeah. Because she, even, like, before the family died, like, she ha- she was always, like, taking on other people's, like, uh, stuff and, like, problems and, like, blah, blah. And, like, they talked about that, that she was, like, he just wasn't being, like, a good boyfriend. And he was, like, not helping her be, like, a shoulder to lean on, if that makes sense. I feel like that's what, like, the friend on the phone said. Yeah, because I guess that is what he does. Like, he he kind of, like, he he was there, and he was comforting her to an extent, saying, like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. He was very much, like, he was very relaxed with everything. Like, bad stuff would be happening, but he's like, dude, like, it's okay. It's not really, like, what's happening. Like, this isn't actually a cause of this. But it was actually preventing her from, like, seeing like things that could have happened like if he had told his sister like like what if he was like no this isn't a good thing this isn't her just getting attention she could have potentially ran to her parents house and stopped that before i assume that the parents house was far i don't know based on like oh like i know it's like night there but like blah 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 i guess i assume that because i feel like she she would have done that she could have at least like alerted cops yeah yeah she could have done things to stop it they were measures i also feel like he she seemed like like, he was the he, cause of all bad things to her in this movie. Yeah, and, like, he made her feel like he was, like, working when he was, like, helping her. Like, instead of, like, doing it willingly, like, it felt like she... And she blamed herself a lot. She was like, oh, no, 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 like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm doing this to you, blah, blah, blah. So, like... But also, to that... in girl, the I've been there. In the reverse, that's fine for him, too. Like, if, it, if he does actually feel like he's working that much and is that much of an issue, then they should break up. Like, cause I I don't blame him for tipping. Like, right? Like yeah. Shit, it seems like a damn handful. He doesn't need to be in that. Um, it was just a shitty situation. I think of like right when he was like, oh, like I'm, like oh, I guess he wasn't even like, oh, I'm gonna break up with her. Cause the guy, even the friend, your guy, yeah, said like you've been talking about this for like three years now. Yeah, this is something, and he did, he was not as invested in the relationship as she was. Um, right. And uh, yeah. So. But like then her parents died, so he couldn't break up with her, and then like. He invited her to Sweden with his friends, and it was just, like, a lot of, like, he could never break up with her, but he always treated her, like, very, like, with a cold shoulder. He could break up with her. He just didn't. He's just a whack boy. Um, and, like, she also should have broken up with him, because he was a whack guy, too. Um, so I guess that's a thing. That's part of it. It's, like, how real the rel- the situation seems. Like, I feel like people have been in relationships, like, they can understand, like, there are mm-hmm. situations where it seems like neither of you really want to continue this, but you are. So you're getting dragged into situations that you don't want to be. This is obviously an insanely extreme version of that. But, like, you could get dragged to hang out with them and their friends, and it sucks because you don't like their friends. You don't like hanging out with them. You could, or, like, like, you could tell the friends don't like you. Like, yeah. So it's, like, there's just – there's things that you guys end up making these agreements to do for the sake of this – saving this relationship for some reason. And – this just is like it kind of yeah. shows you that like no matter how hard you try the relationship won't be saved if it's i guess yeah shitty so this is just a a very extreme version of that that just shows that leads into a lot of gruesome deaths or yeah which yeah. is cool um not only that but like yeah the whole like movie's kind of like based on that so like they have this shitty relationship then they get into this shitty situation but also because of their shitty relationship one of them makes choices, which, like, yeah, like, it just leads to, like, one thing after another. Like, very cause and effect with, like, every single thing they do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it was sweet. I hope she dates the guy who took her there. If she stays with them. Maybe. I guess. But then, then it's, like, now she's one of them, and then now she might venture out and capture people to bring back and kill. And, like, it's obviously not the nicest thing. Um, yeah, but, but it does seem nice. That's the thing. It's, I think she wanted that because remember when they were having like the speech about their parents and stuff? He's like, "These are my family, and like you need that." Yeah, so that's the thing. He's trying to comfort her in that, saying, "That's the thing." Like, so this, like I wonder if she's gonna be there now and feel like comforted. I think she was. Like, like, yeah, at, at the end of the movie, is her just smiling in her big flowery gown, um, which is perfect. It's beautiful. It's that a, is a beautiful scene. Like the entire thing is like. It, like, if you look at it in only those scenes and you cut out all of, like, the craziness that happens in between, it's, like, family dies. Guy tries to comfort her. She's in bad relationship. The guy at the end. 
like sets her free of her issues of a terrible boyfriend of like a non-supporting family the lack of a and family. is very supporting so and ha- is the only person out of the like original group of guys who is nice to her yeah then he ends up being super supportive gives her an entire family draws and, her and like people that praise her people that push her up on like this big flower all crown. the girls that she interacted with were super nice and literally call with her. her a queen mm-hmm. so and call her sister and like, so it's crazy so yeah so this movie could be told- and it's not like they knew that she was gonna be the may queen like yeah, they yeah. didn't like do that on happened. purpose it just happened they know, they allowed her to try to be a may yeah. queen too like well, she was just in it so that's the thing like yeah the film just nuts in that it could be told in these very like short scenes and it didn't need to be a two and a half hour long movie at all but the, i never felt there's a time where i was watching it where i wish it wasn't happening like, yeah everything they watched it like I yeah, the sex scene could have been a little shorter. No way, dude. That's what it needed to happen. It was dope. It, it was made dope. me so uncomfortable. It was weird and you're just watching it. What made it just... more uncomfortable was the fact that there was this guy with his like grandparents like sitting right next that to us. That was dope. That made it even more gangster. I saw him put his face in his hands a couple times. I saw that there. too. And I was like, The dad I, I or the grandpa there. walked out like right when the sex started happening. But I'm glad that I it wasn't me. And I could have just seen him do that, and I'm able to tell the story now. It was there was beautiful. the handicapped lady in front of us with, like, her caretaker. There was. That was also great. And her vo- when she spoke, it was a little creepy sometimes. Yeah, she watched a great movie. She so, did. good job for them. They all watched a good movie. Um, so, that was sick. This movie is actually just a, a love story. Um, it's not a horror film. It's just, it's a love story. It's a, it's a midsummer love story. <laughs> yeah. It just has some some really rough visuals, which yeah. is sweet. And everything like, was shot well everything i feel like everybody was casted well i think so too i feel like the only cheesiness to it was mark's character which says like he he's kind of like the comic relief when there doesn't really i guess need to be but i guess it's cool there is yeah um well like i feel like most of his comic relief like the only comic relief i could really think of other than like him making like jokes about the girl which ultimately led to his death anyway was the scene where he goes on drugs i mean there's that and then in between it he literally like he just he will, like, say stupid shit. He will say stupid shit. They were picking plants backwards. Someone's like, does anybody want to tell them they're walking weird? Like, he oh, was yeah, just, like, okay, okay. He would do that every now and then, just say weird shit. I was um, thinking, too, like, him and Chitty, like, they never were nice to her. And I was almost hoping, like, there was a moment that, like, when she was asking for the sleeping pills from Chitty, that she'd be cool, that they'd, like, grow to be cool together with each other. I mean, there wasn't hostility there. It was just, like... I felt like they were very whatever about... And, like, they seemed hostile towards her at the beginning of the movie, and then it just kind of, like, was... I mean, because at that point, I think they were in the mindset where they're, like, this girl's preventing my friend from doing things that he wants to do. Yeah. So I can get that, and that makes sense. Okay. Um, Because I feel like, yeah... Like you're friends with someone in a relationship, that and you know that it's shitty. Yeah, neither of them like it, so you're gonna take. I guess that's true because like even her friend was like, "Oh, he sucks." Yeah. So like, if we would have seen her friends, it probably would have been like the same thing. But guys, he sucked. <laughs> yeah, the guy was terrible. He, yeah, he was just bad. He just did everything. Like he was a terrible girl boyfriend. He was terrible to his friends. He, he was, was terrible, terrible to... to his friends, and he pulled the same thing on one of his friends that he did with the girlfriend. I don't know if you noticed that. I kind of yeah, mumbled that. To I mean, you. yeah, it was the same thing um yeah he just kind of like it's like a weird gaslighty thing yeah where it was like i should be the one apologizing but somehow i'm gonna make you apologize for it yeah he did it to two different people yeah he like he or did, like he like he, fake apologized he did a bad thing and like would play victim for them to then feel like they were in debt to them i don't know weird uh but very whack yeah but he died spoilers he dies she and that's the thing he dies and i think she in the best way possible because she chose him to die that was like she was like, I could keep you alive here, still part of my life. But she was like, no, like, I think she looked around, she realized everything that she had, and is like, that's it, we'll, we'll kill this guy. This is my ex-boyfriend now, because he's dead. They never really broke up. Neither of them ever said they broke up. She just decided he's going to die. Well, we also didn't, okay. So, the whole, like, pubic hair thing that we talked about earlier, that was a love spell. Yeah. That was put on by one of, like, the the girls from the village what, what the commune, the whatever, commune yeah that she she liked him so she put it on him and didn't really work it was like a very gross visual at the very beginning where like there was like a <laughs> was painting tits. and it kind of had like a step-by-step tutorial of how to make the love potion and yeah so it was like pubic hair and and so, know, period so blood. yeah you're looking at it and you know that something's gonna come of it so because so yeah so we knew that that was gonna happen because she like kind of had a crush on him and then there's a scene where they're all having a feast, and they show, like, numerous shots where, like, the 
normal like the the, the main cast yeah. are just like talking with each other but they're showing the food and christian the the shitty boyfriend is the only guy with a slightly red cup everybody has like yellow like lemonade yeah and he has like like a, it looks like grapefruit juices in there. yeah that's like exactly what it looks like yeah. he so it's the only one and they keep showing it in like different aspects nobody realizes because they probably think that's normal because juice does that sometimes and then yeah but like luda and i obviously were like freaking out because we were like oh my god he's gonna drink it blah blah then he takes a bite out of the little cake thing and it has pubic hair he and then he drinks yeah. and then it's like Bleh. and then he knows what's happening and yeah that was kind of sweet it was kind of dope and then he has sex with that girl. Which is nice. That's a nice part. Well, we don't, and we don't really know, like, because he was drugged right before that, so we don't know if, like, he chose to have sex with that I girl. I mean, he didn't. Or they, if it was, like, a drug situation. They, they gave him the drink to pull down his defenses. Like, I don't know, that's not something he would have done normally. That was just something that happened. Yeah. But sh- main girl saw him having sex with this person. And I think she just lost everything in that moment. Yeah, that she 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 starts breaking down to tears. She crashes down. Because I think she she realizes like I lost my parents. I'm in a shitty relationship with this dumbass guy who like doesn't even care about me because he wasn't even he wasn't even hand jiving when she was dancing. Remember? Yeah, he was there. He was like the he least like non supportive. Yeah. So he wasn't doing anything. He was like a uh, I don't know. Yeah, he was a terrible guy all around. Get you a uh, supportive significant other is the message. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think it needs to be that because that guy is irrelevant. I think just give you just a support system in general because then she has that family. When she was crying, she had that crowd of girls that were like crying along with her. And I, I think that's when And they she, were holding her. That's like, the thing. That's when she, she looked up and she looked around and they were all doing it and it kind of soothed her. And I think that's when she was like, okay, like I don't need this. This is, this is cool. Yeah. They were all being nice. They were all like, the two girls that she was dancing with, like, the first one and then the one that she mm-hmm. was talking to at the end, like, they were so happy that she won. So, yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with a supportive boyfriend. Because, well, no, a supportive honestly, system. a boyfriend doesn't need to take care of all those things that are happening in a relationship. That can be helped by other support systems. Yeah. yeah it, so. does, it shouldn't always fall, like, only on them. But they should also be, like, understanding and yeah. stuff of that stuff. Yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah, um, so that was kind of sweet. Um, she gets family. It's just, you know, it's just a great long way to tell a story, which is sweet, very different visuals. Great. Uh, which did the same things as, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think there were things like you watch this in hereditary. And I think the way the music and the way that everything is shot, you know, that's right. Like there's a lot of parallels you can see, like Mm -hmm. at the end, when you see like King Payman, in hereditary like he just that moment i guess at that point he's possessed by king payment but it's they both end in this weird uplifting kind of auras because at the end of hereditary you're not scared anymore because you know that it's in a guy you know that it's this guy that's there he's a king he's possessed like and everybody just seems pleased with the end result i like horror movies like that because for me horror movies like what scares me the most are more so, like, tiny little things that'll happen in the movie that's, like, a visual thing. We've talked about this before, like, us. Um, an example is, like, in It Follows, like, that movie didn't scare me. But there's a scene where, like, the guy, like, creeps into the room, and that, like, ta- haunts me. Yeah. There's two scenes in Paranormal Activity 3 that I always think about. Um, when she, like, the one of the little girls is running, and she just, like, dunks into the invisible big man, and oh, then okay. he, like, yeah. lifts her by the hair. Ooh, not even like the hair pulling up, but like the thunk. Okay, scares me. I mean, me. yeah. When I run at night, I sometimes think about um, us when the girl is like running away from the other thing. You think about the the, the smiley face guy from that YouTube video too, right? Who's smiley face guy? Wait. I don't remember the name of the YouTube video. It's like a short, like five minute long. Oh, YouTube. smiling man? Nah, that guy's not that scary. I think he's pretty terrifying. I don't think he's scary. Okay, whatever. Um, um but I, I think of us girl. That guy never really scared me when I was running. I, I never used to be scared to run. I'm still not really scared to run, but sometimes it's when I'm running, that, like, it'll like you raise out. my heartbeat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's not really like themes or or scary movies. Yeah, the things that actually like stay with me and make me scared of things or, that like, exist. Visual things. Yeah. Or I mean, it's it's a movie. Yeah, it's not like. Well, I meant, like, a visual scene. Yeah, like it's not, the... a, it's not, it's, it's, that's the thing, I don't know, yeah, it's not a concept, it's just, like, that scene, that scenario. Like, in Hereditary, like, I loved that movie because, as you guys know, I want to be a screenwriter, so, like, 
my resolve as a wanting to be screenwriter was that like I wanted to make a horror movie that didn't have any jump scares it just had like things in the back like they're already there and like you as an audience member sees them but the the cast doesn't and that's exactly what hereditary does there is not one jump scare in that movie and I think that's beautiful it's the same thing with this movie exactly yeah there's not one jump scare and like you kind of see it all happening and it's like i don't know it's like unsettling yeah this movie i think it could have done without the gore but i guess the gore being there was chill i thought the gore was a good aspect for this movie just because of like the contrast to everything else yeah everything was all clean and white and like bright it was literally daytime like 20 hours of the day there yeah that was another thing like night didn't exist so like it wasn't like a you're scared at night kind of thing it's like no this shit's happening in the daytime night only happened like a couple hours a day yeah so there were very few like dark dark themes there but like yeah yeah so that whole like little thought i had goes right into my man junji ito also okay i was gonna write a blog post about that that that's what i think his horror is that whole like those like moments of visually terrifying aspects that's the thing i feel like junji ito does a jump scare but because it's a manga it's yeah like, it's a manga it can't jump scare you but it does a jump scare like you flip it and it's just like it's something that well looks... not always either there's been times and his things that like the scariest aspects to me are like things that are like walking closer so that's not necessarily a jump scare because you see it okay it's just something that's visually disturbing yeah so like his things like there will be um i don't know how familiar you guys are with him but he's been doing comics since like the 80s and so he has a lot of them, and not all of them are good plot lines, obviously. But there's been some that I've read that are, like, super short that, like, there will be one panel that's, like, terrifying. And because that one panel is terrifying, I think the whole thing is good. Even if it has, like, a weird or, like, whatever ending. I mean, that's good. I, like, I think that is good to an extent. Like, because it did the goal of what horror is supposed to do. Exactly. It's supposed to, like, make you feel unsettled. Like, the the plot could suck, I guess, but as long as it did make you feel comfortable, then that's good. That's what you pay money for. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think, like, he's another good example of that whole... Like, that's the best way I could describe his work as a whole, I think. That, like, unsettling fear you have when you're trying to go to sleep at night. And, like, you don't really remember the plot of the movie. You just remember, like, that one shot of the it follows thing coming into the bedroom the concept of it follows also scares me i think that's another thing that scares okay, me. okay i was just using that as an example oh, but sure okay. go for it go for and it because like other things that scare me is like like i don't know midsummer i don't think i'll ever be scared of that but just no nah, nothing in midsummer like well like making me afraid to go to sleep at night but it'll just i'll think about it probably and it'll make me feel weird it'll put like a weird pit in me that i have a weird pit weird. about the sex scene I don't know why, but that, like, it really threw me off. It was sweet. I don't know if it was just because of how much I hated the guy in that moment. <laughs> no, it was awesome. That was the best moment for the guy. He was actually going along with what he was supposed to do, and he was just, like, uh, he, he was making things happen. No, he had to. I was great. I was happy with that. Um, I think Hereditary, like, it doesn't scare me. Another thing. But, like, if I think about it, it could, it could probably freak me out if I'm, like, home alone. I guess somebody honked outside. I don't know if you guys uh, were here. that. an air horn, yeah. yeah. The, the other things they have in common is they have naked old people, which is weird. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be a theme in this Ari guy's stuff, but naked old people will do it for me. That that puts me off. It's like, whoa. Like, that's weird. Yeah, it's kind of... In the new It trailer, you got a naked old person. That's yeah, weird. I don't know. It is spooky because, like, we're so accustomed to seeing, like, youth naked. Like, hot naked people. You see a naked person, you're like, oh, a naked person. Especially in horror film. You know, also, this had full frontal nudity. For we guys saw a guy's too. wiener. We saw a guy's wiener. We saw a lot of girls' wieners. We saw a lot of everything. Um, so that was nice. That was it nice. was different. I would say nice. We saw... I feel like we saw two... Yeah, we saw two guys' wieners. I guess if that guy... You count, oh, yeah. Yeah. We saw the, the hanging dude? The hanging dude? Yeah, the guy there. The black dolly oh, looking guy. <laughs> I thought that the his, old people jumped off naked, but they don't. No, they didn't. Yeah, so we saw two two guy wieners. Which is very cool, very good for a representation in the guy wiener community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't see it that much, so just really good to appreciate it when it's there. Kind of funny that we saw the main guy of the movie naked, but not the main girl. Which is also sick. That is sick, because that's like a... You know, the trope or whatever. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of tropes of when you see nudity in horror films is, like, when they're having a sex scene and someone dies in the sex scene. And it's like, 
when like you know like the scary thing interrupts them while they're doing like getting freaky or you know right where that was not the case with this yeah this was just like the utter heartbreak of seeing yeah your heart your partner banging some other who was actually that's really creepy too because they like said that the girl was finally allowed to have sex which means she's definitely younger so she might be underage not the actress obviously i don't know if she's underage she was sleeping in the house that's 18 up oh so she wasn't like underage um she was i think it's just like yeah nothing about that they have um she seemed old enough they in that like village they had like time slots for like everything yeah the way that that entire village thing was run was kind of sweet they had every like like it just it had good lore because like it all made sense too like i don't know it it made sense for like the plot and stuff like the people who died at the beginning like they died for a reason but based on their customs and like we even he even told them like straight out (laughs) They're like yeah, they, they, they die. die, and she's like, "Wow, I didn't." Believe that. She thought it was a joke. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, they tell you everything that's gonna happen. Like, you don't. There's nothing to try and predict to if you're gonna be scared or not. Of they tell literally watch the movie. It tells you everything that's gonna happen. There's and, nothing like surprising. Like, there's nobody who died who like. <gasps> yeah, well, I guess it was kind of surprising when she'd be like, like you know that whole little. She made sense. I was gonna say it was I more mean, it surprising when the people who were leaving. When he found them. It made sense for him to die, but it was just, like, the the sequence was kind of jump scary. Yeah, yeah. That was the one instance of, like, a jump scary thing, because that, you don't see the hammer, like, the hammer literally just comes down on its head. Oh, that's true. You don't see it, like, going around being swung, like, you, you turn around and you, he thinks that it's, it's just his friend walking in, and it, at the beginning. And then it's not, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that scene, you're right. But, um, yeah, I don't know, like, the people, Chidi did some shit, and so, like, from their perspective, maybe he deserved to die, and same with Mark. Yeah. So, all in all, good movie. This is a good movie. Um, it kind of, like, explained everything, like, the only question I have is, like, is she gonna stay there and live there? That's it. Yeah. And, uh, like, based on the fact that she smiled at the end, like, she probably is. Yeah. I kind of thought for a little bit that they were gonna, like, make it same universe as Hereditary. And okay. make the person that they were worshipping the same payment okay yeah but then they, i mean they never really went into it so it could be i wouldn't want that i think that gets a little too like that that's when i start hating things okay when everything starts leading up to one another and it starts being like an entire big universe and you have to take so many things into account and there becomes like weird like i don't know yeah like annabelle yeah yeah, yeah. that that that's it just being a shit show and it literally i watch it because it's like a good like <laughs> it's a fun movie to watch but i don't think it's a great like yeah it's film. like a horror like on normal occasion, we probably wouldn't spend money on those kind of movies. That's the thing. Unless, like, it's to have fun, like, with a group of friends and stuff. Yeah. We did this, one, just kind of to do it, but also because we thought the movie tickets were going to be cheaper. Yeah, okay, yeah. But I also, I mean, we just knew we were going to watch it, and Midsummer I watched because I just felt it was going to be a good movie. Yeah, I know, I meant Annabelle. But... Okay. Midsummer, the only, like, negative comments I'll have is, like, maybe, like, after the third big table scene, I kind of was like, holy shit, these table scenes are so long. Like... It takes, like, it's very slow progression. Like, there's literally instances where you're you're sitting there watching them eat, not even eat food. You're sitting them, like, just stand there, not even touch anything, saying comments back and forth for, like, three to five minutes. Like, scenes that could be accomplished in, like, a minute long. But mm-hmm. I think the fact that they're taking that long kind of takes into putting you out of your comfort. Like, you don't want to watch this. Like, I think, yeah, as I dumb think it as was it sounds, unsettling. As though, like, you're, it's... It's boring, but the boringness of it makes it unsettling. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, everything was slightly unsettling in the whole movie. Like, even when she was crying at the beginning, like, they dragged on her crying and, like, how loud it was for, like, maybe, like, a couple seconds too long, so you're just, like, there. Then, like, there's, like, scenes with the friends, and, like, it's just, like, slightly awkward and uncomfortable for, like, a second or two It makes you have to, like, you sometimes, like, sit there, digest it. You feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And like they, the whole time, like in different aspects, you feel socially uncomfortable. You feel like, oh my god, like I'm in a room with a crying girl, uncomfortable. Like, yeah. So that's those scenes, those weird scenes. Even like, yeah, you're sitting down with a bunch of people eating food that you're just not talking. That's weird. But then the the parts where people are dying, the parts where like people are like sacrificing themselves, those end up being like really quick instances. Like it's not like slow motion people dying. I don't know. So like, it's. It's a really funky contrast. I don't know, funky. And, like, the old people dying at the beginning, like, 
they drag that out for a bit because I mean they're just standing at the edge of the the cliff, so like we know they're gonna die. We know they're gonna jump because they're on the freaking top of a cliff. Yeah. So I guess that counts as like dragged out death. Yeah. But yeah, the other two specifically, like the fact, or like I guess all the sacrifices, they didn't really show their death. Other well, than I mean, the other part was also dragged out. The last part where they burn the building, that's like you see it all happening. That's you see them burning. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Okay. I don't know. It's just like whatever, dude. Yeah. It's just sick. It's a long movie. You could argue that it, the same story could be told in shorter. But I think the goal of this movie is not to tell a story. It's like they wanted to tell that story. They could have told it damn fast. They want you it to was, be unsettled. It was just to like make it like an experience. Like the plot wasn't the main. I guess the plot was kind of driving of it. It was a very long steps. But if you were to propose this movie to me before me watching it and say, dude, I want like a movie about a girl breaking up with her boyfriend because he sucks dick except two and a half hours long and there's a bunch of naked old people i'd be like dude that sounds stupid that's the dumbest shit i've ever heard <laughs> but then the way it's just executed is super bonkers and i wouldn't have done it yeah so good movie um i feel like there was one other comment i had but i don't remember what it was so uh i don't know here you like oh my mom called me what a good prank I'm <laughs> back. okay yeah the spooky spooky stuff but um, not that spooky yeah like, not that spooky if you're scared of scary movies it's not a scary movie watch it yeah there's like spooky aspects to it like the I gore but that's it i think there's scary I would have liked and there's to, horror i think this this would fall into horror but not scary i would have liked to know more about like the language the runes and stuff like that and like oh, what they meant everywhere but I mean, they might have symbolic reference. Like, they might actually go deep like, into it. So really stupid. But like, when I was in high elementary, middle school, middle school, when I was in middle school, somebody I knew had a book. It was called the Dragon Book, and it was like they was had it all Dragonology, or was it the Dragon Book? It might have been Dragonology, and they had dragon language in it. Okay, and that's, that's what the runes looked like. And I remember we learned them because we would pass notes to each other. But like in that, so like. We had a little, like, decoder to, like, decode the messages and stuff. Okay. But, like, they all looked exactly like that. So, like, I don't know. And, but I feel like that's just, like, a really common, like, <laughs> you got rune symbol. thing that people use. Yeah, because yeah. I'm pretty sure they use that in D&D for the dwarves. And... Yeah, they probably use that for a couple other things. Yeah. So. I mean, they might have actually gone through and, like, made them, like, symbolically representative of, like, certain things. Like, the way that the tables are shaped, the way, like, those runes are. They might be accurate. But I don't think it would really... That's, like, a fun Easter egg, I guess, at most. I'm right, right, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want, like, the movie to be about that at all. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's that's us. Um. Do you want to tell them about your dream you had last night with your shark? Oh, yeah, Julie calls me, and she tells she doesn't call me. She messages me, whatever. Let's imagine she calls me. She calls me, and then she tells me, oh, woo, dude, I had this really scary no, dream. No, 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 this dream was, like, years ago when I was a kid. Oh, this is my most she... memorable nightmare from my youth. And then she goes, yeah, this image is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, it brought me no. back the scariest youth nightmare I ever had. It's a picture of a Junji Ito shark with uh, spider legs crawling around. And I'm like, wow, sure thing, Julie. This is very whack. And so when I was a kid, I had a dream that my mom and I were on a beach. And there was a shark in the water. And I was like, oh, we're going to be fine, though, because like, we're on the sand. And then this giant shark, it was like supposed to be the Little Mermaid shark, though. That's what it looked like with the eyes and all that stuff. It came out up onto the shore and was like eating people and then you know it was just it was a very fast dream but it was one of those dreams where like you feel like the terrified of like oh my god i'm gonna die and then you wake up and so junji ito made a comic about like these fish with legs and one of the panels like people are at a beach and there's sharks and like all these this guy's like oh sharks sharks so everybody gets out of the water and the guy's like oh man thank god like i saw it like everybody's safe and then it's like haha pranked and the shark with legs comes up onto the shore. But the way that it's drawn, like, I think you can't, you don't see the legs, like, too, too much. So it just looks like a giant shark coming onto the shore. And I'm like, oh, my God, he visualized and picturized my childhood nightmare. Well, I know that they, the legs are very apparent. In that I knew you were going to say that. That's why I was looking at you. Because, like, I don't know, but whatever. It's minus the legs, just the shark coming out. And it's a big shark. To that happened in the, in the movie Deep Blue. I think uh, they just have a shark. It's like a big old scary shark. And the shark, they're like on land right there. And everybody's like, finally, we're safe. And the shark jumps up onto the land and starts like shimmying and eating people. Oh, wow. It's really he, sweet. he like enacted shimmying, just yeah. so you guys know. 
So that was kind of sweet. I just had a dream about some kind of weird shark dog chasing me and a bunch of kids last night, and I was running away from them on a shopping cart. And I, uh, sorry, go on. No, there's. I don't want to go into depth. It's not okay. entertaining. Uh, yeah, I've also had like Junji Ito esque dreams since I got obsessed. So my my theory is just that you know, his horror is working because it's getting into my dreams. But it's not only like nightmares. It's just like weird, which I like more. I just think it looks dope. I just think it looks dope. Junji Ito. Yeah, everything just the way the drawing is. Junjito, he's he's my favorite right now. That's what I'm currently reading the Cat Diaries, and I think those are my favorite pieces of literature to date. Wow. Yeah. That's epic. <laughs> 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 All right, I think that about concludes this this episode. What do you think? I think that's fine. I think we went through what we need to do. I don't know what else could we talk about. I think we talked about that. Unless you want to talk about Junji more, there's not really much more. Julie got a shirt of his stuff on it. Um, Bo Lumen got it for me. Uh, what else is there? Fucking. I'm just really obsessed right now. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not done reading them. Like, I haven't read Slug Girl. I haven't read Tomi. I haven't read Uzumaki. So once I read those, we can make like a podcast. I mean, I haven't read them either. The only one I saw was Amigara Fault, which I think is just dope. I sent him another one called Layers of Fear, which I recommend to you all because it's very spooky. I won't give anything away about it. Um. I'm really upset because I found out that him, Guillermo del Toro, who I also really love, and Hideo Kojima were supposed to work on Silent Hills together before it got canceled. Yo, that would have been crazy. And, like, I knew about Hideo and Guillermo, but I didn't know Junji was part of the team, too. So when I found out, my heart broke all over again, and I was really sad. Yeah, Hideo Kojima got cucked, dude. He yeah. did. R. And, R. like, Norman Hideo. Reedus was going to be, like, the actor. I don't like, even know what that I is. I love him. It's still R. And, like, when the game was supposed to come out, I was obsessed with Walking Dead. Now I'm not. Now I care less about Norman Reedus. But, like, it was just, like, such a hit of a time. I love Pyramid Head. <laughs> that guy's gangster. Dude, Silent Hill is so, it's so much untapped potential, dude. Silent oh, Hill's my God, shit. yeah. Silent Hill is, like, those kind of creatures and that kind of, like, spook is my favorite. Where it's more like the... It's not like ghosts. It's not like demons. It's like things. Yeah, just things. Things are wild, dude. Things freak me out. So that's why I like um, Junji as well. Did and Guillermo, did, uh, Guillermo does that a lot, too. Just has things. More like, things than... Yeah, there was that one thing we were watching where it's like the big balloon heads. They kind of come through in the Junji comics. Oh, I read that one. Oh, that one looked dope. It <laughs> was fucking awful no so not spooky. awful like bad it was awful like it actually was spooky that one sounds really it was bad, um too. the balloons that drop nooses they drop nooses on their like counterpart yeah. so they, they go around finding who they're and then is. like yeah there's one there's one visual oh my god so like the main character's little brother like leaves the house that's the only thing about that comic that's really stupid like Japan like announces a state of emergency and they're like everybody stay inside your homes and immediately the dad's like okay well I'm gonna go to work and everybody's like what the fuck like did you not just hear and he's like yeah but that's not real like I'm gonna protect myself and then the minute he steps outside he gets hung and then like a couple days pass and then the brother's like we're out of food I'm gonna go and he like goes and he like pokes his balloon with like an umbrella or like puts the balloon around uh, the umbrella around the noose so he can run away okay but, like, that's it. They, like, don't hear from him again, and then, like, it cuts, and it's a couple months later, and she's like, yeah, my mom, like, died because, like, of mother's love. Like, she just stopped, walked outside because she couldn't take it anymore. And then she's like, I'm all alone, and, like, I'm out of food, and, like, this really sucks, and, like, my balloon keeps calling me, and it keeps saying her name, like, right outside her window, like, oh, hey, open the door. That's and it's so, in her own voice. That's so cock, dude. That's... And then, like, she hears knocking at her door, and it's her brother's voice, and she's like hey, like, let me in, like, I got food, like, I know I've been gone for a long time, but, like, I'm here, and, like, she sees his shadow, and she's like, okay, so she opens the door, and it's the brother just, like, it's the like, Pinocchio talking? style on the window with, like, a giant umbrella, like, stabbed through him, a noose around his neck, and the umbrella is like, ha ha ha, gotcha. The umbrella says that? The balloon, sorry, his balloon, and then so she's like, then her balloon is like, finally, it opened. And then that's that's how it ends. It doesn't show you, like, if she gets caught, if she gets away. How fast do you think they can catch her? And how... The nooses are fast. How are they not able to fight the nooses? So if they stab or, like, harm the balloon at all, the person gets killed, too. So, like, there's one scene where this random dude has oh, a crossbow. So oh, so when he stabs his balloon, he got stabbed with the umbrella? 
No, I, I don't think that was the point of it. I think that the balloon just fucked him over and, like, okay. was trying to be, like, petty. But there's another scene where, like, one of her friends, um, like, they're in an alleyway and, like, they see this guy, like, above and he, like, shoots one of the balloons to try to save her. And, like, it goes in, like, the, the balloon's face. And then the girl's like, oh, finally, like, we beat it, right? And she looks over at her friend who has the balloon and her face is deflating. And it's very grotesque. The movie's so sick. Ah, not a movie. That like that concept to me just sounds so dope. I know it sounds stupid. I know it probably sounds like. Mo- but that's I- the point of them. Like some of them sound like really like out there. But like that's what's so good. Yeah, I, that's sweet. That's dope. There was one that I read that I'll tell you about because it's not like a good one. So <laughs> you guys don't have to read it. Um, it's called The Licking Woman. That sounds sick. And it's like this very very disgustingly oh. disgustingly drawn woman very whack with a giant tongue like i don't know if you've seen junki ito like draw tongues like specifically tongues before but they're always like twice the size of the mouth and they're just like super long and like they're all like that it's really weird sounds hot so this woman is like a neighborhood criminal where she just kind of goes around and she licks people she's that's like so a pervert tough. you know like, like you know those that's people, what they think those people that are licking uh like an ice cream and putting it back. Okay. Like those and people. so like you haven't seen that? No, it's that's like, a thing. It's like a shitty thing. Yeah, people are like going around licking ice cream and like putting it back inside the. <gasps> so watch out. Make sure you get ice cream that has seals on. Oh my god, we have to tell my mom. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, point is. So yeah. Ice cream challenge. So he she goes around licking people and, um, so she licks the main character's fiance and nice. the fiance comes in and he's like, you know, something really weird happened to me right now. Like this lady just freaking licked me and I feel really gross. And she has a little dog and like the dog licks the guy and he's like kind of freaks out because he's like, oh, it's licking me. Like, ah, I just feel really gross. I'm going to go take a bath. And so he does and whatever. And then like he runs like a fever and at night and then she's like checks up on him and like both him and the dog are, like, super grossly, like, pimpled out or whatever and foaming at the mouth. Like, they were poisoned. Okay. Because the dog licked the guy yeah. and the guy got licked. So, th- this happens a couple more times and they start, like, a neighborhood watch. And the girl, the main girl, catches her and she gets, like, arrested, whatever. Um, the way that, yeah, she gets charged, like, criminally, uh, no, wait, charged is it called insanity there we go okay plead insanity so she goes to a mental hospital years go by and they like bring it back and then the lady gets out okay and they cut off her tongue no should have they should have well hold on hold on okay so the lady gets out and like immediately starts licking people again Gangster. and like they're trying to find her but she's like hidden I'm on the gang that's so sick and so the this girl sounds good the girl goes to like where she first caught the licking lady, sees her, and, like, interact, like, okay, I fucked up, whatever. Before she goes out to look for her, she interacts with this college student who's, like, a scientist. Okay. Who also was licked in the past. Ooh, college boy. And she's, okay. she's a hottie. Okay. And oh, she, college girl. Yeah. That's nice. And she tells her, like, they kind of are, like, discussing, like, the trauma that they've both gone through and, like, the fact that the licking lady killed this girl's fiance and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, if I ever see her again, like, I'm going to kill her because, like, I don't think it's fair that, like, she's free and, like, doing whatever. And the girl, the college student kind of, like, tells her, like, why don't you put on, it's like a common poison thing that we all know. The one that makes you foam at the mouth. Okay. I don't know what it's called. I probably, if I thought about it enough, I might think about it. Yeah, it's like hydrogen. I don't have time to think. Hydrogen something. Whatever it is. It might have been hydrogen peroxide. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, That's not right. That's not right. Right. Okay. I don't know, because if you drink hydrogen peroxide, can you die? No, because it gives us mouth parts. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, point is, she puts this chemical on herself, because if you put it on you, it doesn't do anything. It's only if you swallow it that it fucks you up. So, she puts it on herself to kill the licking lady. And as the licking lady does, it's so disgusting, this scene. Do they both die? She, before she, like, licks her... She gets all up in her face and, like, very slowly sticks her tongue out. That's so gangster. And then sticks it in the other girl's mouth. That is the most... So she licked inside the other girl's mouth. So she didn't die? Hold on. Hold on. And then... Oh, God. So gross. Okay, so whatever. Why are you telling them not to read that? That sounds sick. It's sick, but it's gross, but it's also, like, it wasn't, like, that crazy, you know? Whatever. Sounds gangster. 
And then she licks the girl's arm, which is where she put the the chemical. Why is she lick it after that? I don't know. She's just licking her okay. at that point. Like, oh, nice. she's just, like, licking her. Her neck and then her wow, arm. That's and nice. But it wasn't, like, a sexual licking. It was, like, a weird, just, yeah, like, yeah, it's weird. Just like weird. stop. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, she realizes that there's a chemical in her mouth and stuff like that. And she rips the tongue out. And the tongue becomes, like, its own thing. Wait. So, oh, the girl, after realizing she licked up chemicals from that girl? The licking yeah, woman licking lady rips, her own, rips her own tongue out. And, like, the tongue, the licking tongue becomes, like, its own, like, presence and starts, like, bouncing around. Did they kill it? I don't remember if she killed it or if it got away. Okay. I don't remember. What happens to the licking girl? Did she die? It, it all ha- when the woman gets, like, dies or whatever, it also happens in the dies? new, when the licking woman. She dies? She dies after she rips her tongue okay. out, after she ingests the okay. stuff. Um, it also happens that the college student is dead. So there's, like, a weird moment where she's like, oh, so the college student was the licking woman, but, like, why would she tell me how to kill herself? That's weird. Do they look like the licking woman? No, but the, no. Woom- the licking woman looked fucking, like, super weird. So it could have been, like, the same person, just, like possessed or whatever so that's why they never talk about it so then they go into a couple years after that the girl gets a new boyfriend or a new guy and then it ends with like the guy like asking the girl out and she's like oh like okay yeah like i feel like i'm finally like over everything that happened and they go to kiss and the moment that they kiss it's her tongue is like the licking woman's tongue and then she foams out the mouth and dies and then he foams out the mouth and dies because it has the poison on it and then the tongue, like, jumps out of her, and it starts, like, bouncing away, and it's an even bigger tongue. So I think it's the same tongue, but... So it just gets bigger with each life? That's gangster. So I think the licking woman, like, the tongue possesses the person. So I think the college student was possessed. Oh, this sounds like a very sick... But they don't, like, go into depth of, of any of this. It, oh, you just kind of have to, like, assume... Which I think is ideal. I think that's the way... Most of his be. work are, like, you have to pick... Yeah. So you have to just, like, figure it out by yourself. Kind of. Or maybe there's just things you're not supposed to figure out sometimes. You're like, okay. That's what I think, too. Yeah. yeah, so I love him, is the point. Um, I think he does creepy-ass things a lot. There's even been, like, comics that I've read from him that, like, the plot line wasn't good. The story wasn't really scary, but, like, the thing of the sca- story was terrifying. I mean, yeah, like, sometimes you draw a scary picture and that's fucking scary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You do scary pictures. Yeah, it was called The Chill. I don't remember the point of it, but it has this um phobia that a lot of people have. Trypophobia? Is that the one with the holes? Yeah. Yeah. This, like, stone makes you start having holes all over your body. That's cucky. I never want to read that shit. Yeah. And then there's a panel where, like, you see a guy who has it and his eyes, like, falling from his eye socket. That's cucky. Another that's, hole. that's cucky. That's cucky. That's cucky. I don't really, like, I'm like... That scene didn't scare me as much. The scene that scared me more was, like, there was a girl at the beginning, the, the main point of the story, who has it, and, like... You like sh- sh- there's just like a scene of like a close up of her arm and like you see it more as like skin than just holes. Whereas in the main scary picture, you see like just they just kind of look like black circles, and you're supposed to just guess that it's a holes. Yeah. Okay, but there's holes. Yeah, there's cuz yeah. holes are fucked up. Yeah, holes are. I I have gotten that like once or twice. I think it's a very scary concept in general. I know people who have it. Who have trypophobia or holes in their skin? Trypophobia. Oh. Okay. I mean, yeah. Like, I think I've seen people that, like, that's the thing. I, I don't think I have it to the extent where if I see, a, some, like, a sponge with holes in it, I'll get scared because I think that's, like, a thing that people have. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, like, the extent of the phobia. But, I, like, the, the thought of that on a person is scary. Horrible. Which I think anybody would find that scary. So, yeah. Yeah. They did that in um American Horror Story, I think, in one of the seasons. It's cool. People, like, because things coming out and going like Emma Roberts is hot hmm? Emma Roberts is hot yeah but I don't like her in those movies shows at yeah no, nah, she's hot though if you guys have watched American Horror Story make sure you watch Emma Roberts Taisa Farmiga is better yeah Emma Roberts looking nice I don't really like ranking girls on like who's better or worse because I'm not like a fucking misogynist okay, well, I like I like to empower women call them hot say that they're I like Taisa Farmiga and her her characters are usually my favorite characters in the seasons that she's in too Okay, well, Emma Roberts looking nice. Tell Whereas you Emma Roberts is usually one of my also, least favorite I'll characters. I'll go ahead and say Tell you for me is looking nice, too. Yeah, she's so. looking nice. Okay, well, I guess that'll be it, then. Right. I could link uh, the woman, licking woman and thingy. 
actually, I found like a whole like archive archive list of like all of his works and i'm working my way through it so i could just link that if anything yeah, just do that and you'll find like and you guys could read a bunch of them like just i said control f like dude uh hanging balloons are cool uh layers of fear is very cool uh enigma amigara fault's very cool there was actually another one that i was going to suggest to you because it's very similar to Amig- amigara fault it's like also about hiking and stuff like that and there's just a scene in there that is so spooky um, Maybe I don't watch it because I'll be hiking when I go to Austin. I mentioned it earlier, actually. It's the scene that like somebody comes into the frame. Cucky. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah, forgot the name of that one. Go watch Midsummer. Also watch Midsummer. Watch Annabelle too if you want to just have like fun. Yeah, if you want to watch about it and talk about how hot that girl is with me, um, go on at Ludo Insta and then just message me talk about how hot that girl is, or we- you just come meet me in person at your local um uh, fucking. Don't uh, don't tell them where you're. I don't know who's listening to this whatever dude fine um i also wanted to say that the whole beginning of the movie luder and i thought hot girl was like worse girl and stupid she is worse girl yeah i think she got better she's easily worse girl yeah okay i think even though she got better she's still hot she's hot but we were like saying like she sucks the whole beginning of the movie and then like out of nowhere he started he changed from saying she sucks to she's hot a lot i think he always thought she was hot but like he cared less about the fact that she sucked, and I her think, hotness took over. I think me calling her hot was just me trying to avoid saying she sucked because she does suck. She's just terrible. She literally fucks up everything. Because I think she I, was the reason I, that the movie was happening. At that point, we get it. She's downstairs. She's locked. Like she's getting what she deserves. You know. And then, she was in that thing for like the majority. And of then her. it's like, okay, you got what you deserve. Now you're just hot. We get it. Yeah. You, you, you've repented for your sins. Okay. Yeah. So have fun, guys. Yeah, stay take, spooky. Take care. Uh, stay awesome, and uh, let's play that motherfucking weed is now. Let's just leave them out with that weed is. Don't play it. I'm not. Bye, guys. Listen to it at your house. <laughs>